Hey, thank you, Chris. Uh, my name is Marty, and this is David. Hello, we hello. Made, we made it easy, and we're in the same room, so that way we didn't have to have a whole bunch of extra cameras. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the gamification of PM&R services. Um, as Chris uh, was actually asking, can you explain what PM&R actually stands for here at TCH? Physical medicine and rehabilitation. Um, bigger, better, stronger, as Tanya likes to say. Unfortunately, we have things in life that kind of knock us back a bit. Sometimes it's congenital and we're born with it, or sometimes accidents just happen. So how can we, in physical medicine and rehabilitation, not only get you back to your previous level of function or beyond? And anybody with kids knows, man, sometimes words just don't cut it. Sometimes being a parent just doesn't cut it. They don't listen. But games, games seems to help. seems to help and trying to help bridge that gap. So that's kind of the thing that we wanted to explore, explore in PM&R. Yes. Um, the objectives of today's um, presentation are to gain an understanding of uh, how we are incorporating gamification into PM&R services. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna go into what gamification is. We've been on a lot of talks um, throughout this whole symposium and last year's symposium as well on gamification. Uh, we'll do a quick little review on that. Uh, then we'll go into some of the different different patient populations um, and goals of what we service together. Mm -hmm. uh, then we will talk about kind of how we've come together for our co-treat sessions, like what games we use and how we facilitate those sessions. And then uh, last, David will dig into an understanding of the of quantifying the game data into chartable mm -hmm. metrics, because that's obviously we're all hospital folks, and that's kind of important. Right. 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 All right, gamification. Um, there's a very long, fancy um, explanation there as to what gamification actually means uh, from Google Dictionary. Um, but basically, gamification is um, making something exciting because it promises uh, to make the hard stuff fun, which is kind of what we do. Um, crazy, right? Yeah. That's a little crazy. Yeah. 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 Outside it's of my mind. <laughs> outside of the hospital, there's lots of different um, examples of gamification. Um, if you use any like mobile apps, or any rewards programs for uh, your grocery store or any of the different places that you buy stuff with. They all have mm -hmm. rewards programs. Those are That's just gamification. They're trying to make some engagement so that way you remember them and mm -hmm. want to be involved with them more. Sometimes you get you unlock stuff, which is a very gaming term, is unlocking things, mm -hmm. which sometimes might be cheaper gas or a discount or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We can also, as we saw last year with um, some of the presenters, uh, we can actually use gamification and um, earlier presenters from today and yesterday, you can use gamification for mental health, for physical health, um, for just every day doing your chores, uh, anything mm -hmm. like that. You can turn it into a game and hopefully will be more fun and that way you hit your objectives. Yeah, again, yeah, again, no. a gaming term. Because sometimes motivation fails. Like we have good ideas, we have good intentions, we start, but how do we keep the ball rolling? Exactly. Gamification. Yeah, make it into a game. Done. Yeah. So the different ways and the different elements, because not everybody is like frontline hospital. So if you have any questions, please feel free, raise your hand. Marty, you're going to have to help me out. Shoot me a question in the thing. I'll try not to use as much PT lingo as possible but no guarantees. So <clears throat> what we have in the unit that I work in, we have different kind of setbacks. What unit do you work on? I think that's a good qualification. For the there we go, that. okay, that's, that's a good one. I work in the IRU uh, inpatient rehab unit. It's an inpatient rehab facility where kids are less, I mean, they're more medically stable. So we as therapists can have more time and breath to work with them to get them reconditioned to get them back moving and grooving as much as possible and the type of setbacks that we see in the iru the inpatient rehab unit are things such as physical deconditioning from extended bed stay because of cancer or because uh, medical treatments if kids are in dialysis that's a long time in a chair so physically use it or lose it is real so we got to help them get back to where they are Simmels, which is a single event multi-level surgery you typically see that in kids who are born with cerebral palsy and they have a lot of tone they have a lot of spasticity so instead of being typically developing sometimes their legs turn in a little bit or sometimes some muscles are overactive and we try to inhibit them as much as possible but that means 
the other half of the muscles are kind of weak because some muscles are overused. So we go through, do some lengthening of the tendons, sometimes do a derotation of the femur or leg muscles, trying to normalize or get them as typical as possible. Sometimes it's an SDR, that's a selective dorsal rhizotomy. They go in right in the spinal cord and they snip some of the afferent nerves, efferent, uh, that sends the message back to the brainstem. So we all know what we're doing in space, and I'll talk about that here in a minute. But it just kind of helps break the feedback loop. And then there was another friend of mine, exercise physiologist. He was doing way of life here. And that's just getting kids who are um, unfortunately too sedentary to get them up and moving. And it's, you know, sometimes it's hard to get you moving right off the bat. So make it fun. Yeah. Let's get a groove, move to groove it. So that's what we tried to do a little bit with ring fit. And it's all just to get us moving and grooving so the way we think about it pt is a gross motor skill walking climbing stairs playing a game hockey things of that nature occupational therapy gross understatement is fine motor how can we type better at the keyboard from carpal tunnel surgery what can we do to get our fingers to help us clothe ourselves feed ourselves sequencing of events planning things out mm -hmm. And you can imagine sometimes kids being five to 10 years old, I have a kid I'm treating who's three years old. It's going to be hard to say, Hey, time to do exercises. Let's get them and go. And it's kind of going to hurt a little bit, but no pain, no gain. Right. You understand that? Cause you're three and you're five. No, of course. So let's try a different mode, a different medium. Yeah. Gamification. Exactly. So that being said, next slide, please. Anybody have any questions? I feel like I'm kind of rambling too fast. Anybody good? I'll catch it in there. Um, Please do. Uh, this is a quick, uh, like, 15-minute video, I think. 15-second um, video. Yeah, 15 seconds. There's no audio on it, so if you want to, like, talk through um, mm -hmm. the situation and everything like that while it plays. This friend had a Simmel's surgery, and I know this, one, because I've worked with them, but then if you see the AFOs on the ankles, what we're trying to do here is we're using Beat Saber to help him with motor relearning. So we have something called proprioception, if you want to play it again, please, that inherently tells us where our body is in space. So that's one of the things police officers use for a sobriety test is when you close your eyes and you touch your nose, that's all based on proprioception. One of the problems is when we have kids who go through symbols and they're used to their body being in a certain orientation and they're oriented differently, Mm -hmm. They go back to what they previously know, and so we're trying to help them know what the new orientation is. And a lot of people overly use, and understandably so, yeah. the visual. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I see my hand is here. I need to move it. So we use Beat Saber to take out that visual element and make them focus on their body to help with that mode of relearning. But all this friend knows is, hey, we're going to go play a game. Try not to fall. If you do, I'm here to catch you. Yeah. If you get nauseous playing the game, please let us know. We can take a quick break. But just a game to incite the body's learning and also kind of help with anxiety. People can yeah. understandably be anxious when I'm used to moving a certain way. I'm sending those messages to move, mm -hmm. and my body's not doing it. I can't move anymore. That's kind of yeah. traumatic. Yeah. So everything fun to get them moving and grooving. Yeah. Is that all that makes sense? I'm trying not to use too much PT jargon. I think we uh, listened to Crab Rave uh, like 11,000 times that day. It, um, favorite song. Yes. There we go. There we okay. go. <laughs> and then in the hospital, we have different stages of development, let's say. So there's inten intensive... Um, Rehab unit that I'm in is kind of the intensive care unit. There's the heart center, and then there's the IRU. So there's various kids who are medically unstable. They are typically more in the ICU. They're more involved, and unfortunately, that inherently means increased bed stay. So that's where we start to decondition as we attempt to save their life or get them better on. And as they get better, they progress through the hospital. So then one of our questions and challenges is, well, how do we get people up and moving at each stage of the game? Yeah. And that's one of the things I like about ring fit and other games is you can stay in the bed, move your arms. You yeah. have the resistance from the ring con yeah. uh, to do these things. So 
with the heart center, there's pretty invasive things where we have an LVAD, which basically, um, left ventricular assistive device, it's a machine that is pre-programmed to beat at a certain rate. Yeah. So anybody who exercises or moves can feel that our heart rate increases and decreases. So how do we get someone who has a fixed heart rate? Well, that's where we start to use METs and other things I'll explain here in a second, mm -hmm. is that we have to take scheduled breaks to let the body recover because the heart can't pump fast enough to start the recovery process yeah. sooner. So we have to know where you are, how much energy are you exerting, how long do we need to take a break versus kids who are a little bit more um, up and at them in the inpatient rehab units, like you got to tolerate three hours of therapy a day. And that could be between PT, OT and speech. But point being, three hours a day is pretty intensive. Yeah. Like, we got to start breaking it up. For so myself. <laughs> anybody, three hours. Yeah. And if you don't need speech, that's an hour and a half of PT and OT. So yeah. that's going to be a long day. So why not use games to help bridge that gap? Um, next slide, please. Yeah. Um, I think we did have some questions. If you oh, want to we're getting, look at those. Do you have any examples of V? Uh, so I have anecdotal evidence. I don't have any pictures because I didn't, the kid already left, so I couldn't get consent. Um, especially with Ring Fit, we do modify it a little bit uh, because he was a left AKA and a right BKA. And, and that is above the knee amputation and one leg was a below the knee amputation. So kind of running in place is going to be a little bit difficult, but we can still do crunches. So we just took the uh, Joy-Con that just straps around the leg. And if we move, we had it on both thighs or we had someone else it's running with it. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But this kid was also on a bench doing crunches, doing other things. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you're jogging, I think it's um, encouraged that you put it on your shin Yeah. for one of the moves. So we'd have to move it to another part of the body to help simulate that movement. And what was nice about that one is with ring fit, you put in your body weight. And so because he lost body weight because of the amputations, mm -hmm. the numbers still were not skewed. I didn't have to change too much, just the placement of a Joy-Con. Yeah. It's super simple and super easy to do the math. And tell everybody else in a kind of universal language, how do we do that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. A so, lot of it was just modifying like how we're utilizing the tools mm -hmm. and software uh, and the game, as opposed to like trying to find a new thing to use or something like that. We kind of just had to make slight tweaks and modifications as how we implemented it with that patient or different patients as we've gone along. Another way we would use virtual reality with someone who has undergone an amputee rotation um, surgery is prosthetic fitting and especially getting accustomed to that uh, prosthetic because if someone is below the knee you still have a little bit of your shin muscle but the tissue is unaccustomed because it, the bone is used to resting on bone and not necessarily skin so you can see where that would start to get a little bit irritating yeah so even something as simple as standing tolerance we would put somebody in a stander put a vr set on their brain is now going towards the game, exactly. how do we play? Yeah. And then at any point they say, hey, I can't take it anymore. Okay, we'll sit down and then we'll try and, you know what, you stood for five minutes, let's take a 10 minute break. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can go for five minutes again and then slowly start to build on that. Yeah, and I think something we've seen anecdotally is that a lot of times when they're playing, they're not thinking about the goals or the numbers or anything like that as much. Mm -hmm. So they may go longer, they may do more of uh, squats or something like that in their mm -hmm. session. Um, so, again, ga gamifying the process, making it a game. I mean, this is a game that we utilize mm -hmm. that is a game meant to work out. So it kind of fits perfectly. But um, see what you did there. Fits perfectly. Yes, exactly. Uh, it kind of just helps us help them without them even realizing it. Because if I say to yeah. you, hey, do 25 squats, that's kind of a chore and that's not fun. But if you're like, mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, can you get this high score? If you see a bomb coming up or, yeah. like, you know what, I got an A plus, you only got an A. You're trying to get those coins. You're trying to get those coins. So it's, it's always about the coins. It's always about the coins. It's always coins. about the money. Uh, real quick, we talked a bit about Ring Fit. Uh, if you haven't seen Ring Fit at all, uh, here is a quick, uh, I think, two minute trailer on mm -hmm. what Ring Fit is. Uh, let's see. I'm going to mute.
Drop your hips. Victory! Okay, so that welcome was, back. Yes, that was just a quick little uh, trailer. No, we don't want to watch it again. Next. Okay, um, so that was Ring Fit. If you haven't seen it before, um, what you saw in the game there, uh, especially at the end, there's that little leg strap, which you put one of the Joy-Cons in and you put it on your leg. And then the circle there is like a resistance band that you can either uh, squeeze or you can pull it out. Mm -hmm. And it also, uh, you attach the other Ring Fit uh, Joy-Con into that. And that way it knows all of the rotational uh, data and like spatial data and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So that's how it tracks the in-game, like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so that avatar you saw in the game, as you move the controller and stuff like that, then they're moving in the game. That's how you uh, mm -hmm. do all of the stretches or the uh, workouts and everything like that to get those high scores. Yeah. yeah. What is super thoughtful, uh, from my opinion, is that with the ring card, it's set to this arbitrary 0 to 100 scale. So what you do when you're setting up your profile, in addition to setting up your age and your body weight, is you do this push and pull setup so it, it gauges how strong you are. So it knows how reactive and uh, responsive to be within the game. So there's other things that you saw where this person was floating. You had to orient the ring con a certain way, do a chest press, squeeze it, and jump. Well, if you're not very strong with the chest press, you can still play. You don't have to be strong to play. Right. You just got to be able to move it. Yeah. And it's, sometimes it can be just like the tiniest activation. And as long as you have it like oriented the right way, it'll still register. And like we said earlier, sometimes we'll have to make modifications to help uh, patients like physically reach that due to their own limitations and everything like that. But helping them do the process so that way they can get the high score, but then they're still moving and doing the goals that you need them to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It inherently requires them to move. Yeah. And I think the trailer there showed a bunch of different stuff that I don't think we've actually ever used in sessions before, some of the, like, yeah. the longer form yeah. content, because there's like a whole story mode you can go on and stuff like that. But traditionally what we do when we get there is I will work with the um, PT, who usually is you, mm -hmm. um, but we'll partner together to uh, figure out like what your goals are for the patient, like what you mm -hmm. what areas you're working on. And then in the game, you can actually set up workouts based on uh, like what body area that you want them to focus on. So it might choose a bunch of different uh, workouts, and then we'll also include some mini games to kind of break up the monotony and help them uh, focus on what they need to focus on. If you're in the heart center and you can't walk around just yet, we can still do chest and upper extremity, upper arm based activities. And then once you start to walk again, we can do other games. There's a squat goal where you have to squat a certain direction. And then when you stand up quickly, there's a, a metric of rings and coins that go um, vertically. It's kind of like that carnival game that you slam the yeah. hammer down and it shoots the thing up. Yeah. That kind of visual, except you're being the hammer standing up and down. But there's bombs, there's coins, how many coins can you get? How fast can you do it? Mm -hmm. It's not that you're doing it, it's the gamification of it that makes exactly. it such a chef's yeah. kiss. It's, it's the perfect thing. game. And I think now, because uh, we do have, I think, sis. Seven minutes left. Seven minutes so I really left. want you to be able to focus now on like how we quantify that data because obviously making them have fun and moving is great, but how do you actually chart on that? How do you take that information from the game and mm -hmm. make it something so that mm -hmm. way doctors and other staff can actually read that and see that we're not Get just, everybody to not understand. Just playing, we're actually insurance companies who don't necessarily speak PT. I do it through osmosis. Yeah. 
Done. No, <laughs> what I do is we, I try and use this universal language called a MET, and that's the metabolic equivalent of a task. And what's lovely about the ring fit, as you can see on the screen, is it tells you the total time exercising, that top number, the calories that you've burned based on your body weight, and then sometimes the resistance and other things, and there's a breakdown of different exercises that I can chart. What I do with that information is I take it and I translate it into this chart. So if we can go to the next slide, mm -hmm. please, real fast. That gives you a different chart and a spectrum of activities and how much energy it takes to do those activities. For example, if we just sit and type at our desk mm -hmm. every day, eight to five kind of typical stuff, yeah. that is a 1.5 met. If you're just sitting in a chair, that is a one. If going on, uh, if you're walking on a treadmill and you have it set to three, that should be three miles per hour. Mm -hmm. That's about a 3.3 met. Okay. Okay. Yeah, if we stuff. are yeah. basic stuff. If you're what, going on what like we're all a, doing right now in the symposium. <laughs> right. This is going to be about yeah. us moving and grooving. It's probably a 1.5, a two yeah. level met. We're standing right now. Too. We're standing. <laughs> we're breathing. Um, soccer players are around a 10. So just to kind of give you a scale of um, what all we're doing. And what I didn't realize when I started incorporating this with some of the heart patients mm -hmm. is, yeah. was how hard they were working until I got the data. So I took this 60 pound kid. Mm -hmm. He was only able to work for a minute, minute and a half at a time before he needed to take a break. Mm -hmm. And then when I took the information, it translated that he was actually doing something that was a met level two. So something that's a light walk. And I'm like, this kid is struggling. He is sweating, working so hard. He can only do it for a minute. And that's the equivalent of me doing a light walk or being animated when I give a presentation. It kind of really put into perspective because this kid couldn't do all the way to that arbitrary 100 on the mm -hmm. ring scale. He was like 20s, maybe 30s. And sometimes I'd have to do hand over hand or my hand over the patient's hand to help him complete the task. So even though they're not, it doesn't appear that they are doing a lot, their bodies are doing so much more than what I thought it was. And so having that objective data that I could pull from be like, oh, holy smokes, this kid should actually probably take a longer break than what I was anticipating. Yeah, I just didn't know. I just saw a small kid doing this. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, you could probably do it again faster. <laughs> turns out they're working super hard. Yeah. I didn't know that until I translated to this and now mm -hmm. we can go to other aspects of the hospital be like you think it's fun but it's it's yeah. exercise. They're doing work. They're doing squats. It's legit yeah. work. It's yeah. squats. It's everything. Jogging in place if you can. Yeah. All the things. So, yeah, I think the the best story we had was the one we did the coach treat in the heart center. We had the two patients that were playing together and the one patient, I think you guys thought like 25 was max that he could do. And yeah, I think squats. He ended up, yeah, yeah, doing squats. And I think he ended up doing like 50. Just no, he was like 60, 63. Yeah, yeah. Because he was just trying to get the high score, trying to get all the coins and everything. Like uh -huh. that. Just He went all for it. Yeah. Huffing and puffing, breathing hard. <laughs> also one of those um, fixed rate heart mm -hmm. monitors on him. Yeah, super impressive. Super yeah, impressive. Yeah. Like the first time he did it was like 10 or 12. But after yeah. the fourth time, he's like, mm -mm, I'm getting after it. 60. Yeah. Get it, kid. Get it. I'm, yeah. I'm not here to stop you. Uh, my How do you guys navigate the ring fit strap on being compliant with the internet protocol? Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? Sorry, uh, I'm not the most technical. Probably infection control. So we've used the, um, what's that sticky band stuff that you guys have in IRU? We have a Dyson that is a sticky material to help it stay on, but we also have sanitary wipes that we wipe down in between patient use. Yeah, and also I've used as well, we have the um, clean box as well, which is uh, UVC light cleaning and stuff like that. So there's other VR related. related. Yeah. yeah, yeah, more so for VR, but you can use technically anything in that. Acron Attack of the Squirrels, anybody? Anybody play that one? Yeah. We no, use that one no, Friday, one. super fun. Um, here's our contact information. Uh, if you guys need to, if you want to reach out to us for any other questions, um, let us know if we're missing anything else in there. Chris, if you want to chime in, if we've missed anything. Um, so the I clean box is cool. about age, I think, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to remember what game you might've been talking about at that moment, but okay. maybe talk about ages for the games you just mentioned, or at least maybe ring fit and the kind of things you're doing for that. Yeah. 
Ring Fit was more for um, pre-teens and teens because there's more breadth in mini games that require just a little bit more cognitive processing to be involved and play with. Um, Acron Attack of the Squirrels, we it's pretty straightforward. You're either a tree trying to defend off the squirrels or you're a squirrel from the app trying to do it. So yeah. people who need to sit down and rest, that can be, oh, God, I think we've had like as young as seven playing that game, um, doing the Xbox Connect. Shout out to the past. Hey, everybody <laughs> who's over 35 like me. Yeah. Um, just getting kids interactive. At least then it's just this mirror. So I can, like you said, Chris, target a little bit younger audience and get them up and moving, having fun. Mm -hmm. Good question. Yeah. Yeah, and if you um, are interested in more about gamification, I did uh, leave some uh, reading there. One of the books, uh, if you were a participant last year, you might have actually received one free in the mail uh, from Jane McGonigal, which is a great option. I think Forrest mentioned it in the chat as well.